Today, we make Ninja's Stinger Transition. Hey guys, what's up, it's Bravity, and welcome back to another video on my channel. Today, we're getting back into the tutorials, and I'm going to be showing you how to make Ninja's Stinger Transition. Now, if you don't know who Ninja is, <laughs> Everyone knows who Ninja is, but you might not watch him, so you might not know what his stinger transition is, and here is what it looks like. Thinking about doing... Shade, like... So his transition's a little complex with a bunch of things sliding in and popping in and out and whatnot, but um, a lot of people really like it and want to know how to make it, so I'm going to be showing you guys exactly how to make a replica of the transition. And one of my closest friends, Bottom Frag, he is a fantastic Twitch streamer. If you guys do not watch him, I don't know what you're doing, please go down into the link in the description and click on his link and catch a stream. You will be hooked and you will love him as much as I do. Dude's incredible, probably the best Twitch streamer on the platform. It's insane. But he really likes Ninja's transition, and I want to make him a shot for shot exact replica of the transition. So we're going to be using Bottom Frag's logo when we make this transition, but it's going to be exactly Ninja's transition. So let's get right into it. So guys, since the transition is complicated, I have already created it here, and we're pretty much just going to reverse engineer it to learn how to build it. The reason I'm doing that is because when you're creating just a shot for shot replica of a transition, I kind of need to just watch ninjas frame by frame and recreate it and that doesn't make for a very good tutorial so i've already created it and now i'm just going to reverse engineer it and show you how to make it so here's what it looks like as you can see we can compare that to ninjas side by side and you can see it's an exact replica so once you have your composition created the first thing you're going to do is make a solid of your main channel color this first solid should be your main color so you're going to go up to layer new and click solid change the color bottom frag's main color here in the transition is this light blue here so what you're going to do is you're going to place an effect on it called linear wipe. So if you come over here and type in linear wipe, you're going to see it. You're going to place it in there and it's time to keyframe it in. So the transition completion is the slider you're looking for. As you adjust the transition completion, you see it slides across the screen. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to look here see here's linear wipe we've got the keyframes started on the linear transition so after eight frames one two three four five six seven eight you should change the number in the transition completion to 50 percent. so that's halfway done so right there halfway done we've got blue and it comes in just bloop, right to the halfway mark the next step is you're going to select both keyframes you're going to right click and you hit keyframe assistant and easy ease this is a very important step to the tutorial if you do not do this your transition is going to look very boring and it's not going to look like ninjas this is what all professional motion graphics artists do to get more exciting movement so just do it right click select all the select these keyframes first right click on them once they're blue keyframe assistant easy ease once you have them selected like that and they look like these little hourglass shapes you're going to click on this graph editor button right here and you're going to see we've got a bunch of lines when you come in yours is going to look like that it's just going to look kind of round like this and you're going to want to grab these handles here this little circle and you want to drag it to where you get a shape that looks like this so this means that it starts out going faster and then smooths out so it's going to look like this just grab the handle and slide it till you get this little curve just like that so then it comes in all like 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 it starts out really fast and then slows down just like that so once you've done that, the next frame, you're just gonna wanna go forward one or two frames, just boop, boop like that, and you're gonna change the transition completion to zero or 100, depending on which direction yours is coming in from. It's either gonna be zero, 100. All you need to know is you want the main channel color to fill up the rest of the screen, and I'll get to why we did that later. So you got it coming to the middle and then going out and you're done with your bottom layer. The next layer is your secondary channel color. So you're gonna go up to layer, create another new solid, and then just make it your secondary channel color. And this one needs to come in from the other side the same exact way. Now, something you can do is you can take your linear wipe and you can paste it onto the solid color and then just flip the solid color. So if you come in here to the settings or into the effects, you can see there's a flip effect. And if you place the linear wipe onto this, um, the, the secondary channel color and it comes in from the same direction, then place the flip effect, it'll switch to the other side so they come in to meet each other. Cause that's what you're trying to do. You're gonna see they wanna come in and just meet each other in the center. So just whoop, just like that, whoop. 
and you want to make sure that your main channel color, this blue, is underneath the purple. So that, or whatever your secondary channel color. I'm going to start saying blue and purple and whatever his colors are. Just know that they need to be your channel colors, obviously. So the blue and the purple here, the purple or the secondary channel color needs to be on top because that blue, remember, underneath this purple extends to fill out the entire the entire frame, but you can't see it because the purple is covering it up, right? So this is what you need right here, just the meeting in the center, and then the blue finishes out filling in the whole thing. As you can see, if we delete the purple, the blue has filled up the whole screen. So next, you're going to want to erase the purple, take the purple out of it, and this is how the purple leaves, just like that. So what you're gonna do is, let's see how long it takes. So it's, they're gonna meet in the middle, and then after 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 frames. At the 20 frame mark, they come together and they meet, they're together for 20 frames, and then the purple moves to the other side. So the way you do that is literally just with the position. You see the position keyframes here, you keyframe your position and you just take the whole thing and you just slide it over to the other side. Once again, every single motion you do, this is the last time I'm gonna, I'm gonna mention it. Anytime you're clicking keyframes and making keyframes, you want to select them like this, right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease, make sure they're selected, graph editor, and you're gonna wanna do this little curve here. It's going to look like this when you come in. You want to drag it like this so it speeds up at the beginning, right? And then smooths out at the end. Every single movement, you want to do that. And click off the graph editor and you're back here. So then what you're going to do is after the purple has moved to the other side of the screen, you're going to go to want to go forward one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine frames. Yes, I know the blue disappeared. We'll get to that later. But you go in forward nine frames and then you're going to once again adjust the position to send the purple out, just like that. So it's just gonna go out of the screen and we do it in multiple keyframes here, just to boop, 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 boop. It goes out of the frame, just like that. So now we've got them coming together, purple switching sides, and then leaving. Coming together, purple switching sides, and then leaving. So now what you wanna do is you wanna create your last color. You need a third channel color here, and his is this dark blue. So with the third color, this is where things start to get a little difficult and a little confusing, and it might be a little challenging and hard to follow. So you're gonna bring the third color in and you're gonna set it off to the right side like this, and you can scale it up if you want a little bit to make it easier to animate so you don't have to be perfectly exact, you know? But you're gonna place a keyframe right when the purple ends its move to the other side. So right here, it ends its move to the other side. Place a keyframe on the position of your third color. And then after 15 frames, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, you're going to place another keyframe on the position, and you're going to move it to where the blue is taking up the whole screen. Now, you might not see it here because there's other stuff going on, but this blue would be taking up the whole screen. So it just comes in in 15 frames, right? Once again, do the graph editor movement, easy ease, you know. But right once the blue hits the center of the screen. So you see the blue coming in, right once it gets to the center, you're gonna start some scale keyframes. And this is where it gets very confusing. Next to the scales right here, you're going to see a little chain link logo, and it's to constrain the proportions. So that if you adjust the scale this way, it also adjusts this way. But if you uncheck that, you can scale this way and scale this way without it changing the other dimension. So you want to uncheck that so that you can scale it horizontally without it scaling this way. And you're going to set keyframes for it to then scale down into a sliver. So you're going to scale the horizontal scale over time. I'm saying scale way too much. I told you it's going to get confusing. But as it moves in, you're going to scale it down this way into a sliver. So if you watch these red lines here, these red lines, you'll see it scale down as it comes in. So you see it's a full screen and it comes in and then right here, you see it starts shrinking. So shrink, 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 shrink until it's off screen. So this, it gets really confusing, I told you guys. So we're a full screen here. You're gonna position keyframe it in and then it's gonna shrink, 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 shrink and be gone. And that's how you do that. So you want it to come in, but you want the back to follow it out. And the way you do that is you position it in and then scale it out, position it in, scale it out. If you guys do not understand this, 
I, I don't blame you. It is a very confusing way to do this, but it does work and it's just how I recreated it frame by frame. Um, but you guys can see all the keyframes here. You can see what's happening. So you should be able to recreate it if you really wanted to, but here's what it looks like. And I told you earlier that the blue color disappeared. This light blue disappeared. And the reason I did that is because this last third color is taking away everything. It's making um, everything go to transparent. So when this blue covers up the lighter blue, you see this layer ends. So underneath this blue, the light blue disappears, but it only disappears once this dark blue has covered it. So you don't see it disappear. So when it finishes its animation, it is gone. So when this blue also is coming over the purple now, so if we open up the purple, you're gonna see that you need to keyframe the position of the purple to leave. So you see the purple here, you need to position it to leave behind the blue. So this blue, this dark blue is taking out everything. So the light blue disappears underneath it and then the purple is being keyframed out of frame. You see that? It moves with it. Very confusing. So all together with these colors, we have them meet in the middle. We have the purple go to the other side. Once the purple hits the other side, we have the blue start to come in and then it shrinks itself down and everything deletes and moves out underneath it. So together, purple other side, blue comes in, shrinks and takes it out. And that's what happens really fast in Ninja's Dinger transition. So I'm gonna show you this a couple times. Now I will say right now that I built this in a very complicated way because it's just the way I was most comfortable doing it and it works, but that's the beauty of After Effects. There's thousands of ways to do one single thing. So I'm just gonna show this to you multiple times and show you this is what happens in Ninja Transition. So if you have a better way you wanna do it, by all means do it, but this is just what worked for me and you can see all my keyframes here if you wanna recreate it, but this is what happens in slow motion. They meet in the middle, the purple shifts to the other side, this blue comes in and shrinks down as a little sliver to take everything out. So that's what happens in the color. Now it's time to work on the logo, and this is actually really easy. So, bottom frag's logo is right here. So what you're gonna do is you're going to get your logo, you're gonna place it in the center of the um, composition, and when these two things are about to meet in the middle, right there, you can see the logo begin to come in slightly right here. When they're just about to meet, you want to take the linear wipe effect that we put on the colors, and you want to linear wipe the logo in. As you can see, it linear wipes in. You're just gonna set a keyframe on the transition completion. Just bring it in once again, easy ease, graph editor, you know what I'm talking about. And it's just gonna come in just like that. And you want to make it smaller than you think. You see how small that bottom frag logo is? You might think that's too small, but you'll see why it scales up. So it's gonna come in right when these finish. And then before this purple switches over to the other side, it's gonna scale up pretty far. So it's gonna come in just like that. And then after one, two, three, four, five, six keyframes, the bottom frag logo or the ninja logo or your logo then scales up to be a full size, just like that. So right before the purple switches to the other side. So comes in, gets bigger, comes in, gets bigger, just like that. Then the last thing you do with the logo is right when this blue part is coming in, for some reason the logo scales up a little bit more again. Once again, I told you I'm recreating Ninja's transition exactly, and that's what happens. Right when this blue low, right when this blue color comes in, the logo scales up a little bit more. Just a little bit more. So it comes in, scales up, scales up. You see that last little scale up, comes in, scales up, scales up. Then that blue color also takes the logo out, but it does not take it out cleanly. Now this blows my mind. If I were making Ninja's transition, I would have made this blue line here perfectly take out the logo as it crossed over it, but Ninja's does not even do that. Ninja's does this. See how the, the logo goes away, but the blue does not take it out. It, it just goes out on its own afterwards. It's very strange. I guess it's just they, they rushed through it. I'm going to be honest. I think they just rushed through it, but you're pretty much just going to take the linear wipe and then reverse when you brought it in right when that blue color comes over the top. Once again, does not need to be exact because Ninja's is not even exact. So just like that, the bottom frag or your logo leaves with a linear wipe right when the blue comes through. So all together, we've got your two colors meet in the center. The bottom frag logo comes in right when they meet in the center with another linear wipe. Bottom frag logo scales up 
right when it's finished scaling up, the purple switches to the other side. Right when the purple switches to the other side, the blue begins to come in with position. The bottom frag logo then scales up. The blue then scales down horizontally into a little sliver. And then the bottom frag logo then linear wipes out while everything else deletes and moves out underneath that blue color. Very complex transition. Um, this is such an advanced stinger transition and I, 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 I don't recommend it for people who are just starting out After Effects. It'd be very frustrating. If you guys want to make a more simple stinger transition and you're just wanting to have a stinger transition, I'll leave a link down in the description to my simple stinger transition tutorial video because this is a little complex. But let's watch it one more time. It's quite beautiful. I also added sound design for his transition. If you would like to see it, go check out his stream. I'm not going to show it to you here. You can go, you can listen to the fantastic transition in his fantastic stream. So click the link down in the description. But that's pretty much it, guys. That is what Ninja's transition looks like. That's kind of how you create it. It's, it's very complex. There's a bunch of ways you can do it. But I hope you guys understood this and I hope you guys have the information you need to try to begin to recreate it for yourself or make it your own. This I'm just showing you how you can do it this way and then tweak it. You don't have to make it shot for shot exactly what Ninjas is, just tweak it to make it your own. But that's all the time I have for today, guys, and I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you go out and make some dope stinger transitions. And if you do, send them to me on Twitter. I'd love to see what you guys create if you watch my tutorial and use anything to make your own stuff. If you've ever used something that I've taught you to make something, please send it to me on Twitter. I'd love to see it. And you can hit me up on my Twitter right here, but that's all the time I have for you guys. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.